So we'll see. One thing I did want to mention while we were, were speaking, Chris Haynes uh, tweeted out that the Lakers and Nets are actively engaged in discussions for Kyrie centered around Russell Westbrook and, and all of that. So just wanted to to put this in our put this in our little thing. Chris Haynes uh, just tweeted story out on that. Yeah, uh, I was literally just about to say that as well. So good work by you, Shabbat. Uh, <laughs> look, this this is it's. If Brooklyn is going to take a step back and not compete this year, and I think that on some level they're going to have to, the Eastern Conference is a bit too deep. I, I think there is a case for them taking on Russell Westbrook. I also think that there is a case for them trying to attach Joe Harris into this deal. Uh, if I was the Nets, I would want both of those firsts. Like I would want oh, yeah. the 2027 and 2029 first. If I'm gifting you freaking Kyrie Irving. Have they team. traded 28? Because if they haven't, they could ask for a swap there. I can't remember if they've moved 28 or not. Uh, well, no, they they can't have moved 28 because you wouldn't be able to move 27 or 29. So, because of the Stepien rule. So right. I don't know if they've swapped 28 with... Uh, you would know that better than I do because the deal... Yeah, no, the Pelicans don't have the 28 the, swap. The Pelican yeah. swaps run out. They have the, the 2024, which defers to 25. And that's when... Yeah um that runs out and and so that's why 27 and 29 are like the the first available that they can trade yeah. um so i would also ask for the 28 swap if i'm there. yeah I, I would ask for all of this if i was the nets and if i'm the lakers and i have lebron james and anthony davis i have zero leverage i'm getting rid of this russell westbrook disaster that happened last year as much as i respect and appreciate russ as a player uh the fit just was not there last year and the nets are essentially doing you a favor by giving you Kyrie Irving, who is uh, a perfect, perfect, perfect fit across the board with LeBron James. Not really another way to say it, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean that, yeah, that it's a no brainer that LeBron, I mean, who knows, maybe LeBron's around for 2029 uh, at this rate. He could be, <laughs> he, he might be, yeah, right. but you know, LeBron's definitely not concerned about the 2029 pick. You tell him like, oh, we could have had Kyrie, but we would have to do the 2028 swap. And he'd be like, are you crazy? Just do it. Pull the trigger. So, yeah, I think I think that gets done and, and Brooklyn will get whatever they want. Yeah. And look like the Kyrie situation seems like it was not great for anyone this year either. Uh, having said that, we're past the point where Kyrie's stances on vaccinations are going to be a problem at this point. Uh I, you know, as much as I said last show, I strongly disagree with Kyrie's stance on vaccination. Uh, I also think that if I was evaluating this from a basketball perspective, I unequivocally have to note that he's going to be available this year. Like, you know, he, he is a player that, you know, is ha has had his issues and has worn out his welcome, you know, now a few different places for differing reasons. But at the end of the day, he's a Hall of Fame basketball player who is a perfect fit with LeBron James and Anthony Davis, who the reason he wasn't available this year is no longer existent. Uh, he is going to be available this year. The, the Kyrie, LeBron, Anthony Davis fit is perfect across the board. And on top of it, like Joe Harris is obviously coming back from surgery. And if you're the Nets, I think you should want to get off of this Joe Harris deal. But right if you're the Lakers and you're getting Joe Harris, like in this deal, it's actually like a pretty big win for them uh, to exactly get Joe Harris. Yeah. Like I know it's a bigger tax bill for the bus family and apologies uh -huh. about that, but <laughs> like the, the money actually lines up pretty well to Kyrie and Joe Harris for Russell Westbrook. And they, it might be Taylor Horton Tucker. Uh, it sure, might be the, sure. I think it's oh, like, God forbid, can't, can't trade THT. That's uh Got to, got to keep him oh, at all costs. But, you know, I, I, I think, yeah. you know, selfishly as, as a Pelicans fan, this this is not something I'm, I'm terribly upset with because I do think Kyrie adds an element of unpredictability. Uh, and that's really what you're gambling on is, is you know, there's, there's going to be something unpredictable about the Lakers' future. But also it further reduces options for the Lakers to get better by a trade. As long as they keep trading picks that are far out, far out, far out for the near term, I think the Pelicans can look at that 2024 pick, which they can defer to 25 and be like, okay, you know, maybe by then, like they're, they get exhausted all their options. Maybe they even got another ring out of it, but we're, we're sitting pretty nicely. I mean, this eighth pick that they got this year is a nice boon. I'm pretty sure they didn't expect to get that. So uh, they're sitting on a swap for next year. And if Kyrie's there, then 
Um, you know, very possible that the Pelicans don't swap, but you know, who knows? Maybe KD ends up on the Pelicans and they end up swapping anyway. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk about the KD thing, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, for the Nets now, they're going to have the spacing nightmare that is Russell Westbrook and Ben Simmons. Look, if I'm Brooklyn, as, as much as like I, I hope Russell Westbrook like finds a place to play, and like I, I think there are a number of places he can still be like a valuable player uh, on some level like honestly like him in washington is actually kind of interesting to me again uh at this point like putting him next to beal letting him be the starting point guard uh bring monte morris off the bench you have like a number of potential shooting options particularly Kristaps porzingis at center now if i'm the nets i'm probably just buying out Kyrie or buying out uh russell westbrook i'm sorry not yeah. buying out the, the buying out Kyrie conversation that came up over the last 24 hours was kind of bonkers to me given right. that the lakers just kind of have to like give up something for Kyrie. Um, maybe it's one pick and a 28 swap and then they keep the 29 pick. Maybe that's like the middle ground here, but I would imagine they're getting at least a first round pick for Kyrie um, just to take on this, you know, Russell Westbrook money. Joe Harris is not a particularly valuable player for them moving forward um, because it seems like they're going to have to make some moves here to rebuild this is this is just kind of like it's a fit across the board like it just makes a lot of sense i think you just you know give russell westbrook a buyout russ goes and signs with you know washington you know, somewhere like washington and we go from there yeah i mean i, I think brooklyn's just at this point all brooklyn's got to do is figure out how they can maximize value on their stars and maximize the return which i definitely think this is the pathway for that and and, and to figure out what they want over the next couple of years? Do they want to try to be semi-competitive around Ben Simmons and, and whatever's left over? Or do they want to continue just um, clearing cap room and then taking on assets for, for all that stuff, like what they what they did the first time when they try to dig themselves out of a hole? So that's that's a big process for them. And I'm, I'm so curious. That I think the, you know, the, the next, the bigger trade is going to dictate what they're planning on doing. Yeah, I agree. 